Watch This Week in Missouri Politics, Sunday mornings at 11 on ABC 30. Your panel. But first, we're joined by State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal. Senator, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. First topic up, what was your impression of the governor's address this week? I was actually really impressed by the governor's speech this week. One, he was very progressive in some of the ideas that he wanted to talk about. A great example of that is the toll um, for highways and people who are going through the state of Missouri, the gas tax. That's pretty exceptional for a governor who um, is 70 percent Democrat. Um, <laughs> and, and I was just impressed by that because it's an honest conversation that the legislature needs to have. In our discussion um, dealing with Ferguson, I was very happy to hear that he had an opinion when it came to deadly force. And so that means that many of the conversations that we have had in St. Louis County were addressed and acknowledged in his speech. There, there was a theme of him addressing the issue of Ferguson with some ideas. Did that validate you a little bit? Because you've been very outspoken about wanting answers and ideas. You seem to get a bunch Wednesday night. Well, I have to tell you, um, he, our governor, while he was trying to make a good attempt, and I think he did better than ever in communicating some of the ideas that needed to be addressed in regards to social injustice and inequality when it comes to uh, race politics here in the state of Missouri. And some of the things that he acknowledged were very important. Uh, we, I do recognize at the same time when he addressed municipal court reform, while I support Support municipal court reform. It is not the reason why Michael Brown was killed. And so one of the things that was not addressed, many of the things that were not addressed, examples being um, cultural competency when it comes to police officers, education when it comes to police officers, as well as young people knowing what their constitutional rights are. Explain that cultural competency. What does that actually mean to our viewers that might not be as up on the issue? Well, you know, it's really interesting because I live in two worlds, one of the legislative body and one in reality in my district. They are district. very different, aren't they? They're very, very different, and I'm one of the conduits. I'm one of the people who has to go through both of those um, realities every single week and so many of my constituents don't know what the culture is like in the legislature but many of my colleagues don't know what the culture is like in my district and when I say that I also mean law enforcement they don't understand the culture of the people that I represent and it's very evident um, when you look at the three hours that I was tear gassed on a one-way street alongside 150 young people um, for peacefully protesting I will tell you that it was, I would never be in a situation where I felt unsafe. And for us to be tear gassed with highway patrol there um, was definitely an injury to the First Amendment. And that's why having an education of law enforcement, uh, the our Constitution has to be upheld for everyone. You don't get to pick and choose who is going to be protected by the Constitution. And the first few weeks um, after the death of Michael Brown, there were a series of, of injuries, constitutional injuries, to the people that I represent and myself. A great example, another great example of that um, is the curfew that the governor enforced unconstitutional and the five-second rule, um, also seen as unconstitutional, and when it comes to people being able to voice their opinions, they have every right to do that peacefully. And one of the reasons why I was out on the street is that I wanted to make sure that my constituents knew what their rights were and abided by the law. And this is not the first time, though, you've been outspoken. Uh, our viewers, yeah. most of them will probably follow you on Twitter. They know that you, uh, they, they don't have to wonder what you think about most issues. One of the things that I think someone lost in the, in the, um, the overview of the situation was you've had some things you've pointed out that you didn't like about the governor's approach before Ferguson. And could you maybe for some of our readers that might have might have lost some of those nuances in all the events kind of explain what those differences were far before August. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are in the public and look at what is going on in Jefferson City um, at a, a very distant view. And so while some of us were working on education policy for over a year, um, we gave ample opportunities to our governor to engage in educational policy, which is really important. I do represent two school districts that are unaccredited. Mm -hmm. I also serve on a school 
school board. Um, and there are several examples that I have seen where we needed to do, where we need to do a better job when it comes to education policy. This is a real deal. And let me tell you how Ferguson education intertwine. Um, in the first couple of weeks, I saw that many of my constituents, young people, did not know what their constitutional rights sure were and are. And so it is incumbent upon all of us to educate them on what their constitutional rights that's were. That's not an issue that's that's just to the African American community. It's for everyone. The entire state, I think, sometimes doesn't know what their rights are when the government approaches them. That is absolutely correct, but that is why education is the foundation of life, everything. What the level of education you get will determine your success in life. And when you are in an uneducated, um, subpar school district, you're not going to have the opportunity to figure out the right pathways to do the right things. There are many young people that I have been mother to who have cried on my shoulders. Uh, there is a woman who I know who was hogtied, unconscious, pregnant, and kicked by police officers. Wow. And so we're dealing with examples like that that our government said that was okay. No one has addressed issues of, of torture with my constituents who, I, I don't, know anyone who would condone a an unconscious pregnant woman being hogtied and kicked by police officers, nor do I know anyone who would condone um, being called animals and monkeys. Of and that's not. what law enforcement did. There are sometimes though, it, it seems like the, the party opposite yours, the Republican Party, runs against anybody that's in the government. If they have a DNR badge on, they're the government. But if they have a different type of badge on, then, then they're very pro giving them more power. Do you think sometimes that's an oddity that you're either conservative but, but not in this case? Well, here's what's really interesting. While the state of Missouri cannot pass Medicaid reform, um, I have had more Republican legislators come to my senatorial district than Democrats, and that's the God to honest truth. Well, there are more Republican legislators, though. Well, but there are more people who have come to my district from the Republican Party than from the Democratic Party. And they have literally sat down with my constituents who have been injured um, in various ways. And that's something I'm gonna tell the truth about. I'm very, sure. very happy that Senator Dixon came to my district, um, as well as Senator Emery, as well as Senator Schmidt. There's a bit of a tripwire with uh that a question I think is very challenging for most people to ask. You're a very qualified person, you've, you've led protests, you've been very active. Sometimes the question that, that we've heard a lot that I think sometimes people are hesitant to ask, obviously in American history there's been a long example of very productive protest. In this situation, the last few weeks, there's been some questions, as some, are some of the protests actually being productive to change policy? Mm -hmm. Some of the protests in the Senate, would you classify those as productive or, or or they sometimes maybe make it harder for you to actually legislate change? Well, as I said earlier, it, we cannot pass Medicaid reform and expansion in the state of Missouri, but I, I do believe that we can uh, pass policy that deals with inequality in the state of Missouri. And while there are more, no other time in the 15 years I've served in state government have I seen a sea change um, in the mindset of Republicans who, who represent a supermajority. They want to listen to the people who I represent. However, there is a cultural disconnect. As I mentioned, one, many of the state legislators that I serve with don't understand uh, the cultural behavior of the people that I represent. At the same time, the people that I represent don't understand the tradition and the culture of the Missouri State Senate. So I felt on the day that is so important for family members, having our traditional procedures um, disrupted in uh, the state Senate was counter to what we are trying to produce, which is uh, constitutional changes, some statutory changes, and but that also is reflective of the type of education that we have in the state. Um, there were no disruptions in the House of Representatives mm -hmm. on opening day. The disruptions were in the Missouri State Senate where it 
I think, um, I'm very hopeful, it is easier to pass legislation to create reform so a situation like Michael Brown does not happen again. And so I had to backtrack with some of my colleagues who I've been talking to for the last five months and say, listen, we need to work together in understanding uh, their culture and their behavior, why they are doing what they are doing. Did, did you feel like those concerns were were listened to? I am talking to senators one at a time mm -hmm. and they understand. I mean, yesterday I talked to one specific uh, senator who said, listen, my wife came up here. It took four and a half hours for her and her friends to come up here to enjoy our tradition in the Senate on opening day. And I had to communicate to that sure. senator that, listen, there is a cultural disconnect on both sides, but it's also reflective of the lack of, of education that we provide to people who mm -hmm. live in the inner city. Well, Senator, thank you very much for being here and communicating.